What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is draft number two of APA Season 5. The San Francisco Giantes had a great 2-2 two and two run with the Psychic Gym that we went with last time. And uh, I had high hopes for going with a, with a different gym this time, but I got a really low pick in the draft order. So some of the things I wanted to look into drafting uh, got picked pretty early, so I had to really kind of play it by ear. But the beauty of the second draft and what will be the beauty of the third draft and and so on and so forth is people now anticipate that I'm going to be drafting monotype. And so with my first pick, I start a pseudo rush, so to speak. So those of you who know draft format and have, have paid attention to drafts, you'll notice a lot of the time when one particular type starts to go, Everyone kind of rushes to take that type, maybe earlier than they would have ordinarily. Uh, you see it a lot with fairies. Like a lot, there have been drafts where people, and this was much more pertinent before the Tapus were out. The Tapus are now like the premier fairies. But before they were out, people wouldn't necessarily draft a fairy until the first one got drafted, then everyone got one. Like as soon as Clefable went, someone's like, okay, then I have to get Sylveon. And as soon as Sylveon went, okay, then I have to get Florges. Like all the, they would all just go. Like that was kind of like early. If you heard a noise in the background, that would be my girlfriend who is trying to record me while I'm recording. So let's continue. So the, the pseudo rush, right? Doing a mono draft, if the first Pokemon you pick is a is a dual type, they're like, okay, what's he doing? Quickly grab that. And so it's kind of funny to see that before I've really exposed my full hand. People are guessing what my monotype is. So let's just get started. Came to me, I'm a, a pseudo wheel pick because I'm like, I think 15th uh, or 14th or whatever the second to last pick was. Uh, and so I ended up going with Mega Altaria as my first pick. I think Mega Altaria is super well-rounded. I like it as a Mega. I've used it not in draft, but I've used it before on some other teams. Laddered with it on Showdown a little bit. I like Mega Altaria. I think uh, not, you know, devastatingly powerful, but definitely a super solid pick. Uh, and then I capped it off with drumroll for what my monotype is, is Dragon. I went with Latios as my tier one. So I picked up a Mega early, which is not super normal for my style of draft. A lot of the time I figure Mega Pokemon are pretty good. You can wait pretty late in the draft order to go for them. Um, but I, I liked the combo, Mega Altaria. I liked Latios. Latios has very unique typing. Psychic Dragon, obviously just the, the Lottie twins are the ones that have that. Uh, I like Latios because it can go physical or special. I like it because it can go physical or special. I like that it has setup options. I like that it's very powerful. Love the speed tier. Super important um, for for this draft uh, and a very good tier one. So looking at the next, uh, I had to go for, after I got these two, which I thought were very important, like kind of clutch picks in this whole scenario, I had to start looking at which tiers were likely to go quickly and there are very few dragons in tier two. So I had to go with a tier two and one of them had already gone actually. As soon as, once I made these two picks, I then had the long wait all the way up and down the, the list and someone grabbed Hydreigon, which is what I would have wanted. So I ended up grabbing Komo'o instead. Komo'o is a really good dragon as well. Um, I think if Hydreigon had still been around, I would have made my free pick Hydreigon and had two tier twos in this draft. Uh, but I wasn't able to secure Hydreigon, which is kind of a bummer. But I like Komo'o for a couple of reasons. I like that he has, again, multiple different routes of setup opportunity. Um, can boost in a couple of different ways. Is pretty bulky. Can be a hazard setter. And ultimately, the coverage moves that he has access to are really good. Komo'o had... That was slept on when when uh, Gen 8 first got released. Gen 7 first got released, and now it's just I, I think really good. I think the coverage it has is there. I think the options it has available are there. Uh, I really like Komo'o for for this build. Moving on, number four, uh, I ended up picking Kurum uh, from Tier Three. 
I think obviously the typing holds Kyurem back and his speed tier being 95 is a little unfortunate, but his stats are so good. So good, so bulky, so powerful, super hard to take out in one hit. The typing sucks, sure, but it's very good offensively. Uh, so I was really excited about uh, about picking up Kurum. Great coverage uh, in his move pool. Very strong, has access to things like Flash Cannon, which will be really good against uh, fairies, which obviously a Dragon Gym, that's gonna be one of my issues. That and ice coverage on everything, because ice coverage is pretty omnipresent. A lot of things pick up ice coverage. So I have to look out for that, obviously. And having Kirim around will be good, uh, a good assistance for that. Uh, my fifth pick, I ended up going with Dragology. Uh, another tier three pick. This one was kind of just, I think I was, memeing is the wrong word. I wasn't memeing with this pick, but uh, there were quite a few options in tier three as far as what dragons I could have gone for. And I really wanted Dragology just cause uh, talking with my front office and just thinking, man, this team is such power. Let's go with more power, super power. Dra Dragology is great for that. Um, obviously, the the typing uh, poison's not super necessary, but it is another way to handle fairies, which could be useful. Actually, a lot of dragons do have like one or two coverage options for a lot of the fairies in the tier, but Dragology is just like full stop. Here you go, um, an answer to that. So uh, I thought it was uh, an important pick probably more important than some of the other tier three options. Uh, and I could have considered, I was still in an opportunity here to take a few more of them. Uh, one that I had in my mind was uh, Kingdra, but Kingdra, I ended up going, well, we'll get to, we'll get to it. But I picked up Flygon next, which was another tier three. Uh, I, I think it makes sense that Flygon went up a tier now that it has access to Dragon Dance, historically it's always been tier four. I think it's a good defogger. I actually do. Um, it's resistance to all of the other defog things, uh, I think is good. I like that where we can levitate and have an, another immunity to uh, to ground type attacks. I like Flygon. I think Flygon's good, honestly, I really do. So solid tier three pick, and we are now down 100 points of our 400 budget. Uh, my seventh pick was Salamence, which I can't believe was still up. And also at the same time, Dragonite was still up. It seemed like a lot of the dragons that were getting picked on by other people were from lower tiers, which sort of hurt because, uh, but it makes sense because if they're assessing my draft, they would have seen like, hey, he doesn't have a tier four or tier five yet. So a lot of people were leaving those ones open. Apparently this was a snipe, I think. someone I remember someone saying that they were hoping to get uh, a late Salamence pick, uh, but I grabbed him. So that's 180 plus the 100 that I spent on Flygon. I'm now down to only 120 points remaining for the last two picks, uh, which obviously means I can only spend 60 on each of those, which is a tier four. Um, am I doing my math right here? 120 left. Yeah, 120 left because I spent two, uh, 280 already. So 120 left to go with. So I have that in the back of my mind. But of course, I just had to go with Ditto. You guys know uh, it's always going to be something that I really want on my roster. I really love playing with Ditto. I think it's kind of my thing. At this point, I know other people have said that they're interested in trying it. So that might mean I have to keep bumping up when I draft it if I want to make sure I always have it. But even if it gets poached in a later draft, like in, in draft three or something like that, I still have it uh, available for my all-star roster and I drafted it this season. So can't say that I never, that I ever went a season without drafting it. Uh, number nine, I went with Drompa uh, from tier four. And really it was just, this one was largely because Guzzlord went and I really wanted Guzzlord, but I wasn't able to wasn't able to get it, so I, I, I wanted something powerful. Uh, Noivern was also gone at this point. I think it's possible that all of the tier fours were gone, so I was forced into picking two tier fives. Not a huge deal. Um, just 
unfortunate that some of the ones that I wanted were, were not available for me. Kind of uh, frustrating because a lot of these picks uh, were due to my position in the draft. Like I might have been able to get them if I was a little bit earlier. But we make do with what we make do with. Uh, and my 10th pick ended up being Turdinator, uh, which is an awesome name for a terrible Pokemon. And I found out that Turdinator and Drompa actually have identical um, base stats in different distributions, uh, which I thought was really cool to find out. Turdinator just got the worst of them. Um, I'll pull it up just so. Turdinator and Drompa. Uh, but yeah, there's, they each have a stat that is from highest to lowest, 135, 91, 85, 78, 60, and 36. So for Drampa, he's got really high special attack, pretty high special defense, pretty high defense, pretty high HP. And so it's, it really kind of actually goes down in a logical order of like what stats are least valuable. For a slow Pokemon, obviously. Speed is valuable if you're fast, but it's not valuable if you're slow. Um, Turdinator has the same speed, 36, but redistributes those, that 135, 91, 85, 78, 60. Um, so his HP is lower, which is unfortunate. He splits the 78 and the 91 between attack and special attack, uh, neither of which are good enough to really be valuable. And then he has 135 defense, which of course is held back by his really low HP. So he's not that defensive. Just unfortunate the way they choose to do it, but he has access to Shell Smash. So in theory, patches up some of those if, if, if he chooses to. Um, his stats in that regard aren't appallingly dissimilar to what Cloyster is working with. But in general, it's just, I wanted the fire typing. It's cool to have uh, something that's neutral to fairy. Uh, again, just like Dragology is. Uh, it's an option for me. It's a setup option for me. And then last, and definitely least, we picked up Sligoo. A lot of people were wondering about this one and people were saying like, oh, Alolan Executor, easy, easy pick. No way, man. Not taking another four times a week to ice Pokemon. I've already got uh, both Salamence and Flygon. I didn't need that in my life. Uh, I went with Sligoo. Sligoo is interesting. Another option we were looking at was Shellgon. Uh, the reason I went with Sligoo is much higher special defense. And yes, lower defense, but not appallingly lower. And better physical, or sorry, better physical or special move pool offensive split. And I don't really like defensive Pokemon that have that are setup bait being like super super non non aggressive. So Sligoo was a little bit of a better option than Shellgun in that regard. So that was ultimately the draft I went with. Uh, what do you guys think of the Dragon Draft? Let me know in the comment section down below. And uh, really looking forward to using this for the next four weeks before we move on to draft number three. And I've got something special planned for draft number three. You guys wait and find out what that is. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys next time.